everybody. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Blackwing pencil. Um, it's a sort of mythological pencil because famous writers and authors and artists and musicians used it back in the day and then it went out of, um, out of manufacturing for a while and then another um, manufacturer decided to remake it a few years ago. So um, they seem to have cornered the market on the, oh my god, I want that kind of impulse purchase. Um, and for that reason, I have not been a big um, user of them because it's sort of like they always have another edition that's coming out. So it's another <laughs> expense and then suddenly you would wind up having so many pen pencils that you don't know what to do with them. The way that I um, purchase and use pencils is that I actually purchase them and use them as opposed to just collecting them. But there are plenty of collectors out there um, and so some of you might be interested in that. And the Blackwing is really good for collectibles. They tend to increase in price as they run out um, and you can no longer buy certain editions. Um, and so I have definitely seen people this year um, saying they're selling their black wings because they want to pay for medical bills or they've been out of work because of COVID. So it might be something that you would want to invest in, but um, know that just like every other in investment, who knows if it's going to actually make you money. Um, so uh, let's look down at the page. I'm going to show you some of the different black wings I have. And I usually um, just buy one or two of the editions that they come out with or the volumes that they come out with. Um, and I've only started doing that within the last two years. So there are a bunch of volumes that I don't have that were um, released in earlier years. And I don't know that I'm going to continue to do it because what I've discovered in the last two years as I've bought two of each of the editions that they've come out with is that I'm not in love with the pencils. The thing is though, is that they look really cool. So they're okay for me to keep on hand around the house for writing. Um, I usually do a lot of lists of things that I need to do for work and I tend to do that with a pencil. So I'll use these. Um, they're also kind of nice to have for journal writing because there's a built-in eraser and most of my artist pencils don't have a built-in eraser. Um, and then whenever I use them in a lesson, even on Zoom, even with my youngest students, like a seven-year-old was like, oh my God, what is that pencil you're using? I have to have some. So for her holiday gift, I got her a few. Um, so they do look very cool and I think that's the appeal. Um, but personally for me in terms of drawing, I don't find that the cores are, um, quite as defined as drawing pencils and artist pencils are. And then the other thing that's really difficult is the numbering system doesn't include the um, hardness or softness of the pencil. So then you wind up having to memorize which pencil is which hardness or softness based on the color or the name or the artist or writer that it's associated with. So it's just a whole complicated mess for me that when I'm drawing, that's the last thing that I want to have to do. I want to be able to just know, hey, I'm picking up a, an HB pencil or a 2H pencil or a 3B and I know exactly what those mean. I know what hardness or softness that is. And um, it's much more straightforward than this whole creative new fandangled way of penciling. Um, so let me show you down at the page. Um, we'll look at all of the different volumes that I have in the different colors and I'll talk about some of the names um, and we'll talk about the cores so that you can get a sense of what is available if you were to want to collect any of these. Okay, so this is the, um, these are the black wings that I've collected so far. The standard one is the 602. Um, that's the oldest one, that's the historic one, that's the one that's sort of like, they'll always have that. Um, now they're starting to make the MMX, which doesn't have um, anything written on it other than Palomino Blackwing. Um, it doesn't say MMX, and I think they've actually redesigned it recently. They've put in a new logo, which is like this B, which I think doesn't even print very well kind of hard to see. Um, then another standard one they have is the Pearl. They're always going to have these available. Um, well, not necessarily always, but they usually have those available. 
um, and then the natural. So you can see that what they have that's sort of usually available are the um, MMX, which is the soft version. The balanced version is the pearl. The firm version is the 602 and the extra firm is the natural. So those are usually available. These other ones that I've collected are the collectible special editions that are limited editions. Um, you can either sign up to buy a box of 24 of them and those are usually $25 plus shipping. So that's expensive. That's more than $2 per pencil. Um, what I usually do is there's a stationery store that's nearby that I can go and buy individuals and I usually go and buy two just to test them out and see what they're like. Um, so some of my favorites, this one you can tell has gotten um, other pencils drawing on it, but the Bauhaus is kind of cool. This one's a soft core. I also think the um, this one is the balance, the surfing one that's dedicated to surfing. So each one of these pencils comes with a story. They usually have a little additional um, insert of a gift in the box. Um, I think the surfing one is really beautiful. It's turquoise with a gold sort of wave pattern. Um, another one that's a favorite of mine is the one that's dedicated to libraries. And I've already sharpened this one, but it used to be a faded, lighter um, turquoise green color here. And this is sort of the green color of the lamps that you might find in libraries. And I believe this one glows in the dark, although I haven't tried that out. This is one of the newer releases, the 19. It has, um, I believe, 19 stars on it. And this is for the suffragettes that worked for the vote for women. Um, let's see, those are probably my favorites. They also have one, so like usually they're for musicians, writers, um, artists. This one is for Jackie Robinson, the baseball player and his baseball number. So a lot of baseball people will use pencils to um, score the game and keep track of stats and things like that. Um, so <clears throat> those are all the ones that I have. The different types of cores that you're going to find are the soft and you can see it's a little bit blacker. Um, the balanced, let's see. I think this one belongs over here. It's a balanced one. This one just came out on um, November 27th, Black Friday. They had a special one and I wouldn't normally buy those, but that happens to be my birthday. So I bought pencils with my birthday on it. Um, otherwise it just sort of feels a little bit gimmicky. Like, yeah, we know you sell pencils. You want to sell extras on Black Friday. Um, anyways, I digress. The soft, the balanced, the firm, and the extra firm. And to be quite honest, I don't really see a difference between the firm and the extra firm. They don't seem very firm to me. I wouldn't use them to draw if I were doing something that required a really tight line. Um, they're okay for writing, like if I'm journaling um, or taking notes or making lists, but I find that they do um, need sharpening quite often. So, they just aren't my favorite pencil to have around because of the fact that they don't have a wider range in the cores in terms of the hardness and the softness. But I will show you this really cool feature that everybody notices the shape of <clears throat> the eraser. But what's also very cool is that you can see, let's see one that I haven't used the eraser for at all. If I can get it out. So the eraser originally comes with a really long piece. And you can see on this one, I've used up a large chunk of the eraser. And so what you can do as the eraser gets smaller is you can pull this eraser clip out and <clears throat> raise the eraser up so that when you put it back in your pencil, you still have eraser that's coming out. So <clears throat> you'll never really run out of eraser because of this. I've heard some people jam a little piece of paper in between here if their eraser winds up like pushing back in as they're pressing on it to try to erase. And then the other thing that's very cool is that you can buy replaceable erasers. So if you want to swap out the color or if you have a pencil and you haven't 
um, finished using the pencil but you've used up the whole eraser, you can go ahead and swap those out and kind of make a fresh pencil again that you're always going to be, be able to have an eraser for. So that's kind of the cool feature of it. Um, other than that, they are a little bit longer than traditional pencils. Let's see if I have one. I don't think I have one out here. Um, I think they're like 0.4 centimeters longer, something like that. So that's the other interesting thing is that they won't fit into your stand standard pencil cases at times. So um, many people wind up collecting special cases to put them in um, because they're just a really long pencil. Uh, when unsharpened especially or when newly sharpened. Um, the last thing that's kind of interesting and at some point I might show you how to do this, a lot of people do wind up um, pulling off the ferrule and the eraser clip and eraser and then placing that onto another pencil. They call those hack wings. So you might have seen other people with different pencils <clears throat> with this cool paddle shaped kind of paintbrush shaped eraser back and they might have been making their own combinations, which is like a whole different world of fun if you're a pencil geek. <laughs> and a lot of us are pencil geeks, so it's, it's good. Um, so that is kind of an introduction to the Black Wings. And if you guys want um, more information, I'll put some links below so that you can read more on um, both their website and then Jet Pens has a really good kind of overview of what the black wings provide. So that's all about your black wing volumes and the special editions that they have as well as the regular editions that they have. I hope that's interesting to you. Um, know that there are collectors out there and it's something that you could start doing yourself if you're interested in having a pencil hobby. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I um, hope that's interesting to you guys and I'll see you later. Yeah. <sighs>